Hey Andrew in Bloomfield, New Jersey, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses with Transition 7 Gray Lenses and Crizal Alizé for your new Gucci 1008 size 55 and the color is the 51N. Take everything out of the original packaging that Gucci sends it to me in. Of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on one of the temples to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging, including the original demo lenses, one of which that says Gucci on there. This is a great frame with their classic red and green Gucci colors with the black plastic front. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to pop out your original demo lenses. And I'm going to put your Italian frame into my French edger and hopefully they'll get along. I'm going to wake this up and hit trace. So the stylus is going to come up and trace the shape of the right side of the frame before moving over and tracing the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic Gucci frame and you will receive free clear single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses. All of my receipts have my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will be reimbursed for this purchase. So in just a moment, this color, the frame shape, I should say, is going to pop up onto the screen. I'm just going to dial in your pupillary distance right there, and let's go ahead and get your lenses ready to go. Your right eye reads minus 75, minus 175 at 180. Of course, you're the same on both eyes with just the axis being different, but I always like to mark everyone's packets. So let's go ahead and make this one your right lens and your left lens. If you will notice, there are two prescriptions on here, one in plus cylinder, one in minus. Everything we do now is in minus cylinder, but there are some old school people out there who still like to write things in plus cylinder, but it's the same lens. So since this is your right lens, let's go ahead and take it out of its protective packing. It comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens just again just like your frame to protect it from rubbing together with something else during shipping your axis for your right eye is 180 so i'm going to spin the axis wheel to 180 which also goes by the number zero from one to one one to 179 the next number is 180. so i'm going to put it let me zero it out make sure everything is right on target we are i'm going to put it on minus 75. I'm going to put your lens in and rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Check your astigmatism correction. Everything is lined up perfectly. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses, which are kind of difficult for you to see. So I'm going to darken these for you. That is one, and that is two, and that is three. And this is the right lens. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now with the left lens. I'm going to take it out of its protective sleeve. Pull the laminate off the front, and we're going to spin the wheel to five. Right there between, halfway between 0 and 10 is 5. Keeping it on minus 75 power, put your lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Check your astigmatism correction, that looks good. We're going to put three dots on your lenses. We're going to darken those three dots. One, two, and three, and this is the left lens. So let's go ahead and take everything back down here. We're going to go ahead and get your put your right lens in. Put your right lens in. We're going to shake it all about. The reason why I put those three dots on there, it shows me exactly how your lens is going to be oriented inside the frame. It cannot be rotated in any which way or else you're just not going to see as clearly. This is a block. I need to attach this to the front of your lens. This is what's going to hold it in place in the lathe, essentially. So I need to put a double-sided adhesive sticker on there, of which I've already done. So I'm going to pull away the tape to expose the second side of the, the sticky label. That black side is the sticky side. This little silver button in the back is a magnet. It does two things. It's going to hold it in place with this magnet there. And also the magnet inside of there. So let's go ahead and get those three dots lined up just perfectly. That is your optical center. The blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. And... The other two dots I'm going to have on that orange line that puts me on the exact meridian that I need to be. I hit that button, the arm drops down and places the block onto the lens for me. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the left lens. The PD already mirrors the right. Pull this paper away. Drop it on the counter. 
make sure the magnet lines up the way it's supposed to and let's go ahead and get your left lens oriented perfectly that middle dot is your optical center which is going to sit directly in front of your pupil and then these other two dots are lined up on the horizontal plane and let's hit that button the arm's going to drop down and place the block onto the lens now the actual cutting wheel is this is the edger it costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out and buy one and put it on your kitchen counter you won't need me anymore you'll be able to cut your own lenses at home but the wheel on the far right with that white residue on there that's the actual grinding wheel that's going to grind this lens down to the final shape that it's supposed to be this wheel in the center is going to put that has a little valley in it that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame so now the let's lay that down so it doesn't fall come on stay there stay there we're going to put you there but this magnet is going to hold it in place in the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck i'm going to pull up the shape of your frame onto the computer these are polycarbonate lenses i am not going to polish it i am not going to put a bevel on the front surface of the lens only the back surface and then i'm going to hit the green start button a clamp is going to shut and then the lens is going to come into and be traced by two white calipers they're going to trace the right side of the frame to make sure this lens is large enough to fit and it is and it actually measures it twice because it double checks the thickness of the lens at every point on the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so that the lens will fit best inside the frame it can move it forward or backward depending on the thickness of the lens for the best cosmetic finish now in just a moment you will see the lens as it comes down onto the grinding wheel and that is your lens beginning to cut now you can also see there's water running in the background but polycarbonate cuts dry where plastic and high index plastic cuts wet but speaking of your lenses they are made out of polycarbonate the brand from this company is called airwear because their light is air they are the transition 7 gy stands for gray and it has crizal alizé and i'll demonstrate that later but polycarb is 40 percent thinner and lighter than regular plastic they're also virtually unbreakable they're bulletproof up to 22 caliber if it wasn't my fingernail would shatter this lens because i'm strong as a strong like bull no okay seriously but it also has both uva and uvb protection built into the lenses we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied like the lotions creams and sprays that you have to do when you go outside of the beach or anywhere else at the jersey shore or anywhere else you may vacation to or every day now the other accoutrements you get with your gucci of course you get the gucci bag established in florence south carolina no florence italy in 1921 it has their logo all of this will be shipped to you and of course this is your gucci case and cleaning cloth that got run over by truck i hope that's okay your gucci cleaning cloth and your card of authenticity let me open this up and this is to verify that you have purchased an original gucci product and you can register this with gucci yourself if you so desire but i'm going to put all of that back now your case does fold up flat to fit in your back pocket when it's not in use or backpack or anything else like that when you do want to use it it unsnaps oh snap and then it unfolds and then you can close this up and it will snap back for firm protection and then when you don't need it when you're wearing it it does store flat to minimize space you know that italian engineering the same people plus that nice felt on the inside and i wish there was smell of vision but this italian leather smells so good just holding it in my hand it smells like the interior of a ferrari or a lamborghini that is nice and you're going to get all of that and of course I'm also going to include instructions on not, not only how to care for your eyeglasses, but for your case and your cleaning cloth so it will last you for years. No other seller on the internet, so I am told, offers to do this for you. 
Now if you notice water is spraying onto the lens just to wash away any optical debris and it's also receiving the safety bevel. It looks like a little Dremel wheel but that is smoothing out any rough surfaces that may be on the back of the lens. In just a moment the door will open and we'll see if this is the final size or if I need to take it down a little bit more. First thing I want to do is dry your lens off so it is not slippery. And of course that anti-glare coating that you have is also a hydrophobic coating so you need no more liquid cleaners in order to clean the lens. Just the cleaning cloth that Gucci provides as well as the one that I'm going to be giving you. But in order to mount your lenses you tuck it in at the outside corner first and then push down at the nose. And there's still a little bit more resistance so I want to take it down a little bit more. I'm going to take it down about, oh where's my stylus? Let's see, that's one tenth of a millimeter. Let's go for another five tenths, so 0.15 of a millimeter. And I'm going to hit the retouch button. Now the anti-glare coating that you have on here, the Corsal Alizé, it's three features in one and eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent, and street lights. The second feature is it's an anti-reflection coating. That's why it goes by the abbreviation ARC. It is an anti-reflection coating. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. It makes for much better eye contact. That's all they see. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. They'll see just your eyes. The third feature that I like is the practical side is that it comes with the best scratch protection in the business, the best scratch coating. The machine that Crizal uses to apply that coating to your lens has cost well over a million dollars. It literally vaporizes seven different layers onto the lens, taking 24 hours to apply. And because of the time and expense, they put the hardest scratch coating on top of that to protect that coating. Where's my little flashlight? Here it is. So in just a moment, the door is going to open and we'll check to see the size. Because I also need to demonstrate one more thing for you. Now you decided to get the combo, so you're getting the sunglasses and the clear lenses at the same time. But again, here's how you mount either lenses that you get. I'm just going to clean off the schwarf that was on the edge of your lens. You tuck the lens in at the outside corner. You hold the frame upright. I've got my elbows at my sides, arms at a right angle. The frame is perpendicular to me. I'm working on the, the close side, the empty side. I'm not trying to reach across. But you tuck the lens in at the outside corner, which is closest to your chest, and then using your thumbs, you press down the nose and it snaps right in. Now let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. I'm gonna put that in, flip that over to L and hit start. And just like before, that caliper is going to, the clamp's going to shut and then the, it's going to move into place the calipers which are going to trace the left side of your frame this time. It'll show up here on the computer. You can see the different thicknesses as it goes around, as it traces. Again, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so that you have no edge thickness whatsoever protruding from the frame. So you have a great finished cosmetic value. Let's go ahead and pop this off. It is no longer needed. Now, to pop out the clear lenses, you're going to turn the frame downward, or the sunglass lenses, however you do this. And there's two ways you can do it. I'm right-handed. I'm going to place my right thumb against the nasal area of the near the bridge. I'm going to grab the lens by the other side. I'm going to put a little bit of torque onto the frame. And you can just make sure your frame is at room temperature. And then you just push down at the nose. Now some people, now to, again, to put the other lens in there, here are your sunglass lenses I've already cut. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner, push down at the nose, they snap right in, rotate the frame around. Now this is my technique, you'll probably develop your own, but again, tuck it in at the outside corner and then just push down with your thumbs at the nose. It's always with the thumb, it's always at the nose. Having said that, I've gotten emails from people that some people like to pull up on the top of the frame. They're going to pull that word at the same time pushing down with the thumbs. Again, you can develop your own technique. Some people can even pull out here. It's just this is the thickest part of the frame. You'll never have to worry about damaging it that way. The top of the frame is thicker than the bottom. So I do caution about pulling out of the bottom, although if that's what you want to do, you can. But again, pull upward on the top of the frame and then push downward with your thumbs. Out pops the lens. 
I'm going to put the right lens back in. Again, I tuck it in at the outside corner. Some people like to tuck it in at the nose first and then push down at the edges. But that is the thickest part of the lens. I like to have the thickest part in first and then push down at the skinniest end. Now I'm going to go ahead and inspect your right lens. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 180, which is zero. Put it in over that red dot that I still have on your lens, which is your optical center. Spin the axis wheel and I'm getting, where's my flashlight? Come here flashlight. I'm getting minus 75. Spin it until I check the astigmatism correction. And we're at minus 250. That is because 250 is exactly halfway between two and three. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter. And it starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter, 150, 175. So you need three steps of correction for your farsightedness. The majority of your prescription is astigmatic. You have astigmatism. You need three steps of correction for to make everything the correct size. Without your glasses on, everything is much larger in real life than it really appears. So this will minify down to the correct size. You need an additional seven steps of correction because seven times 0 0.25 is 175. So that's why in member high school algebra, you add these two together. Now, this first number gets everything the correct size. The second number takes away fuzzy edges. That's what astigmatism does. It makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So this first number makes everything the correct size. The second number makes everything clear. This last number, if you think of astigmatism correction as a fine two knob and a straight line from zero to 180, we're gonna turn that fine two knob to 180. Now for your left eye, same powers, three steps of correction for farsight and it's another seven. So you're having a total of, of 10 steps, which makes it 250, but we're gonna turn that fine two knob to five, which is just over the zero. Now 180 and five seem like they're very far apart, but they're both very close to the 180. In fact, 180 is on the 180. This one is five. So you're very close to just that horizontal meridian. Something that would be far off would be the 90 meridian, which would be straight up. So let's go ahead and see if the left lens fits. And of course, you're going to get the original lens packets to make sure that you are getting the Transitions brand Signature 7 gray lenses with Crizol Alizé. You will receive all the manufacturer's original packaging. This little white material that's on the lens is called Schwarf. It is optical sawdust. I'm just going to remove all of that before I try and mount this into your lens. Let's go ahead and take this. I'm going to pop it in at the, get it off my thumbnail, but again, pop it in at the outside corner first. And again, I have the empty side closest to me, elbows touching my sides, arms bent at a right angle. This is my technique. And then I push down at the nose, it snaps right in. So let me take this block off. It is no longer needed. Get the excess moisture off the lens. I'm going to measure this. I'm going to put the axis wheel on five. Spin that and I'm getting minus 75, which is one tick mark away from one. Check the astigmatism correction and we're at minus 250. So that is made perfectly. Remember high school algebra, you add the two numbers together. Well, I use today's terms. If someone had borrowed 75 cents and then they borrowed another dollar and 75, they would owe you $2 and 50 cents. That is where we're at, exactly halfway between two and three. So that is made correctly. Correctly, your pupillary distance is 63.5. I'm gonna put this card so you can see. I'm gonna put the zero on my PD stick against my thumb. And then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're reading 63.5, so that is made perfectly. The other thing I wanna do now is clean those dots off your lenses. And this is the time I like to point out that Drew, when you get these in the mail, there's a very small chance that these will be too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that, that is why 90% to 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm gonna get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and I press them down on the counter, they definitely wobble. That's because I'm one ear is higher than the other, or is one ear lower than the other. I can never remember. 
I know it's the same. Come on, humor me. The clown gets to laugh while he's at work. So let's flip this over, press down. There is no wobble. I make sure there's the same amount of tension on each hinge. These are beautiful, beautiful glasses. Again, this is the color 51N. I'm sorry, 51N. And so this is what they look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate the transitions part of your lenses. Move my camera a little bit. I'm just going to expose them to a very strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now, as you will notice, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for the lenses to darken when they're exposed to the sun. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now, Drew, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses get dark on day one. Give them two weeks. So they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a traditional car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your upholstery to rot or your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun. That's why they don't turn dark in a car. If you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker in cooler weather than they will in extreme heat. When it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, your glasses are miserable, everyone's miserable. Who wants to work 100% when it's 100 degrees outside? So this is the first time they've been darkening. Again, they're going to darken every day for the first two weeks. Come on, Drew, we talked about that. Don't you remember? So that is that. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Drew in Bloomfield, New Jersey. I hope you enjoyed watching as I made your Italian Gucci's. Again, this is model number 1008. This is a size 54 in the color 51N. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.